Donc je vais vous parler de so, I'm going to talk to you about the impact of uh, the lockdown on children, on the day-to-day -day life of children during the first lockdown and the consequences that it had on uh, family life, on uh, hobbies and uh, learning. Obviously, this was a very exceptional situation for children, this first lockdown. Even during the Spanish uh, flu that we've spoken about, the, we did not see such a situation. That is to say, the impact on uh, mandatory schooling, not just on the lives of children, but also of the economy. And we saw this during the first lockdown. And the question we asked ourselves was about inequalities. That is to say, how do inequalities operate in these situations when pe parents must take over uh, from uh, uh, teachers. And so we conducted two studies, one in the spring of 2021 and the other during the autumn. This was a study that was already planned but that we postponed. And we wanted to know about uh, gender inequalities, class inequalities, and uh, uh, we wanted to be able to present a simple table that was based on a more in-depth analysis that we conducted and that enables us to attest the solidity of what I'm going to show you. First of all, as it relates to uh, the schooling of children. In reality, teachers sent most of information by email and parents were mobilized during this lockdown, Partic particular uh, parents of the working class. And so what we wanted to do, we wanted to see whether the child was helped for more than three hours or more because this demonstrated the differences at work within the different social milieus and depending on the sex of the child. We see that girls, when you have a girl, when one would spend a little more time with her, with her schoolwork, as if um, girls succeed better at school. And this was also to do with the acceptance of the situation of working from home of girls compared to boys. And uh, what we observed is that in the working class, uh, a lot of parents uh, struggled um, with this aspect of the lockdown and they dedicated a more significant proportion of time with their children. And so this free time or this, this, this work that was freed up by a school work, which is generally speaking six hours a day, and how it was used? Well, we see that it was used more for hobbies, but uh, mainly we see that uh, these hobbies involve the use of a screen, and they spent roughly two hours 45 minutes uh, in front of a screen, 22 hours on sports activities, one hour 45 for uh, artistic or cultural activities. And this is different, uh, a stark difference. There's a stark difference between girls and boys. Boys are much, use a lot more, use screens a lot more. And so we can see that this is different because in reality, as it relates to boys, a part of their free time was used uh, was uh, was used to, to for screens. However, there is a big difference. Uh, uh, there's a big split between uh, free hobbies, if you will, and school activities. So there's a clear distinction between work and uh, leisure, um, between middle and upper class families. We see that they go out more often, more activities are shared with parents, so uh, more diverse activities as well. And so outings, um, we see that uh, there is a slight difference, but this is not necessarily the, ne the expected difference between girls and boys. And I think that this must be highlighted because uh, one may think that, yes, uh, boys spend more time outside, uh, girls more time inside, in accordance to classic gender roles. But as I've been trying to do, um, we see that this was not necessarily the case. What's significant here is that there's a link between the social position but also the type of activity, the type of work that one uh, conducted, that one did, 
and this had a, an impact on the parents' availability to do outings with their children. Now, from the point of view of the relationship with parents, uh, uh, now we're um, talking more about the consequences of, of all of this. And so we can see here that there is more degradation of relations uh, with parents among boys and more among the working populations, the working class population. There are other factors that I can't uh, show here, in particular material conditions uh, and one's uh, working conditions. Another potential consequence, well-being, the availability of the child, any concerns that it's accumulated, that the child accumulated over the period, and uh, uh, how this impacted uh, their sleep. Well, generally speaking, children slept more because they did not have to get up in the morning. And so, here we looked at uh, difficulties falling asleep or waking up during the night, and we do see some dis some differences here. There were more difficulties among boys, but they were stronger than usual. So in reality, if we were able to distinguish the real effects, it would... Uh, be perhaps girls that have more difficulty in this respect, and this does not appear on the graph. However, we do see a number of difficulties with categories that accumulate uh, economic products. We calculate all the indicators uh, such as uh, uh, revenue, etc. And among those unemployed, there were exposed to insecurity, and this would be this correlates with difficulty falling asleep among children. We also looked at the level of anxiety, uh, the ability to remain focused, and we see quite clearly that there is a distinction between a clear distinction between boys and girls, uh, and depending on one's position, social position, there is a, a, a almost a, a summary of what has been presented so far. We received uh, data and I wanted to provide some results from this uh, study. And so it's quite interesting here is that we have the school results that we could uh, analyze. Uh, as you imagine, this would take uh, a lot of time to do. But we asked the teachers uh, questions about their perception of their perception of the children's difficulties after COVID. So, uh, what appears in terms of the level of the pupils, there are no gaps. But we know, and I did not say this earlier on, that uh, other qualitative studies have been done in the world and the capacity of uh, middle class and upper class parents, even with work from home, led to a significant amount of challenges with the parents, streamlining its schoolwork. And uh, sometimes this led to an improvement of the uh, pupils' uh, level. However, in the working uh, class population, these difficulties were accentuated. And this is what we see in the perception of teachers. There are no major catastrophes with the lockdown. There is not a, a drop in the level. You can see that their perception of the situation of different classes, well, it's quite, it's higher. Well, it does not vary that much. This balance does not ba does not vary that much. What is more remarkable, however, is the increase in these gaps in these, and this is in line with what I was saying earlier on. And we see that in the number of children affected by these difficulties, this was quite low. Generally speaking, teachers will describe two or three children who have uh, suffered specific difficulties that are linked to the lockdown. They also adjusted to the situation by uh, going over uh, the curriculum that their colleagues should have done earlier on in the year by reorganizing uh, their teaching at the beginning of the school year, uh, providing individual support and, uh, and, and reorganizing the classroom, for example. All of this to say that there were no major catastrophes um, during the lockdown. There was not a, a fall in the educational level of uh, the pupils, they weren't all depressed, but there were specific uh, 
difficulties for those who already had a schooling or relational difficulties, and those the, the, for, for those people, their difficulties were accentuated during the lockdown. And so we can only bear this in mind when we examine the state of French society today and the persisting aspect of uh, inequalities. And we must also think about it when we think about the effects of the lockdown and hoping that we do not reproduce this same situation. Thank you very much. Thank you.